So far, I've shown you a lot of geology and topography and given you explanations which all my engineering background, all my training in geology, all my knowledge of this area causes me to say to you that with conviction I hold it to be true. I can evidence it at a level that meets my requirements as a trained engineer for things to mechanically be explainable. I've given you some more abstract information about my faith and my understanding of where we're going. That's a little bit more difficult and you might want to mull about it, mull over it, you might want to pray about it and it might take you some time to say yes and you might never say yes and that's your responsibility now because I've shared what I can. But surely you're asking the question, how on earth did this happen? You have lived on earth all your life and you have never seen such massive events. Yes, we had the tsunamis a few years ago. We live with regular reports of earthquakes and volcanoes, but generally they're far away and they don't really touch our lives too much most of the time, unless a loved one happened to be on that beach that day or on that shore when the volcano erupted. How do we explain massive depths of water-laid sediments? How do we explain massive upheaval of the Earth's crust? How do we explain this cutting down? How do we explain these valleys where the material's just gone? How do we explain those ragged hilltops which haven't been neatly eroded off by water? The stuff's been plucked out of the top of them. The cliffs, rocks have been plucked out of them. How do we explain that? It doesn't fit with what we've been taught. But let's stick with mechanics. There has to have been a massive event that caused massive disruption on this Earth's surface that goes way beyond anything we've ever thought of. So let's go way beyond anything we've ever thought of and see if there's a possible explanation. The conventional explanation is this happened gradually over millions or billions of years and that the mountains, etc., all formed when the earth was formed. But somehow we don't find that sort of topography and geology on other planets that I've come across. We don't find water in any sort of quantity on the other planets that are near us. How did we get such a flood? I'm going to share with you a theory, and I want to stress it's a theory. Hold it up and test it against its practical validity. Look for flaws in the argument, but also look for flaws in the counter-argument and see whether you can come up with a better theory. Maybe there is a better theory, but I think this one works. So I'm going to tell you now about the, global, about the fly past of an ice comet that nearly hit the planet. As it approached the Earth, huge chunks of ice fell to the atmosphere, deluged the planet. The gravitational forces twisted the Earth and the crust broke open. But I'll tell you more of that now. Going back to something that I mentioned in the introduction, displacement in a steady state situation requires an external force. New movement requires a change in state in terms of the forces acting on an object. Any evidence of a change in state is evidence of an external force acting on the earth. What do we see? Massive sedimentary water impelled deposits, massive igneous intrusions, massive cutting away, massive erosion, all of which speak to external forces. Much of what follows is a recap of points made in previous sessions. We live in an unstable universe, for example, a runaway star traveling at a speed which would take it from the Earth to the Moon in one hour. Massive blocks of space in, of ice in space at the Kuiper Belt, not far removed from the perimeter of our solar system. 
A dirty snowball in space, only 160 times the distance of the Earth to the Moon, away from us, an ice comet, Lulin. Evidence of what looks like an ice object impact on the planet Mars, a crater which doesn't have anything embedded in the middle and limited upthrow of material, which doesn't seem at all consistent with a solid object, but is entirely consistent with a chunk of ice which disintegrates on impact. We look at that crater superimposed on South Africa and see that it is huge. It's possible that such an ice object might melt partially as it passed through the atmosphere, but it would probably still impact the Earth and cause huge uh, forces on the surface of the Earth. Even if it just flew past, it would cause significant disruption. There's some other theories about where the water came from. Certainly an ice object striking the atmosphere would melt partially or completely before reaching the surface. Water in the vapor canopy, which is postulated to have existed before the flood, could have precipitated as a consequence of a comet flyby or impact. Bodies of water stored under the crust referred to in Genesis as the fountains of the deep breaking open. Surface disruption triggering volcanoes and gases released by the volcanoes contain water vapor condensing as rain. It's entirely congruent with the broad concept of a comet flyby or impact. The exact mechanics are less important than the reality that it could happen and is entirely capable of practical explanation. Looking at continental separation, it requires massive forces and therefore an external source of force. The ocean trenches, another source of drainage, again requiring massive disruption of the surface of the planet, massive ripping apart, not something that is consistent with the steady state situation. In the event of a flyby causing the rotation of the Earth on its axis, we would see massive inertia and drag of the continents overcome by the forces that would result. Theories suggest that the Earth was once vertical on its axis, that it followed a circular path around the Sun in exactly 360 days, and that something happened to cause the Sun the Earth to move into an elliptical orbit to tilt on its axis. Such disruption could cause massive surface disruption. In such an event, if the Earth did tilt on its axis, the surface, the core, the, the crust, would rotate easily, but the core would stay behind something called hysteresis, the lag effect. This would result in massive friction between the core and the crust, and that would be just what was needed, A, to separate the continents, and B, to get the continents moving. Collision between the continental masses would be enough to stop them. Looking again at this graphic, we see the continents separating and water draining off into the gorges that are formed with massive velocity scouring away and eroding the material to give us the landforms that we see all over the earth today. This is the best theory that I've encountered. It fits for me. It's entirely consistent with the information reported by NASA in 2009-2010. In fact, it made sense to me the first time I heard it about 10 years ago. So I leave you to ponder and take a view whether you've heard of a better theory. It certainly works better than, for me than to suspend my engineering intellect and training and believe that all the things I've shown you happen gradually over millions or billions of years. To sum up, steady state theories cannot explain what we've seen in this video. Massive external forces have to have been applied. A massive external source of water seems essential. There are large chunks of ice in space. An astronomical object or ice comet seems to explain the situation perfectly. Is there a better theory? I don't know one. What do you think?